Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting tulip tops. <laughs> I'm sipping on some strawberry mango tea. <laughs> and if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. So today, the painting that I did is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Heidi Middlestat. I have a benefit from my Patreon members, whereby every now and again I'm going to put out a call for photos. They submit photos, I select some of them and turn them into YouTube tutorials. And as a thank you, I send the original painting off to whoever submitted the photo. So I hope Heidi likes her, her photo here, or her painting. Um, if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photos for me to turn into tutorials and or learn more about the Patreon membership program where there's a bunch of other benefits that you get to use to increase your artistic and your painting skills. I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, fluorescent pink, deep yellow, green oxide, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, fire red, and cobalt blue. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I will be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number two bright synthetic brush. And I might end up referring to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, or I'll just call them out by name. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water or something to wash your brushes with, as well as something to dry your brushes with. So I use a paper towel, but you can use anything that you would like. And down below this video in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint the sky. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my number six round brush to pre-mix a custom color. The two colors that we're going to use in this step are blue and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a light blue color. We'll be using that light blue color for the majority of the sky, but I'll use a little bit of cobalt blue in addition to my light blue for the top to make the top a little bit darker. And then I'll use my light blue plus white to make this bottom right hand corner really light. So I'm going to first premix myself my light blue color, which I have magically done on my palette. So you can see where I'm headed. How I achieved this is just blue and white. So about, I would say, maybe two-thirds white to one-third blue, or maybe even like a quarter blue um, versus three-quarters white. Somewhere in this vicinity is going to be my light blue. So imagine this to be the majority of your canvas, the, the shade that you want. And of course, yours doesn't have to be the same exact as mine. Once you've got that color that you like, what I'm going to do is I put my mixing tool away. I'm going to pick up some of my cobalt blue with my light blue. Oops just drop some of it and on my brush at the same time, about equal parts of both. And I'm going to start at the top of my canvas using a left to right type of a brush stroke. 
And then as I come down the canvas, I'm not going to pick up much more of my dark blue, just whatever was kind of in my, in my palette there. And then I'm just going to go back and forth, left to right, creating what's called a gradient down my canvas. So whatever dark blue or cobalt blue is still left on my brush, if I push my brush a little bit harder in my canvas, you'll see that it gets darker because it's releasing those um, colors. My canvas is making noises today. <laughs> it's releasing those colors off of my brush. So then I just keep picking up the light blue as I'm going down the canvas. And what'll happen is it'll get lighter and lighter as it comes down the canvas to until it gets as light as that light blue. And then what I'll do when I get down towards the bottom is I'm gonna start adding a little bit of white to the equation. So I'm a little bit past my halfway point. So what I'm gonna do now before I go any farther is I'm just gonna take my brush and lightly with not a lot of pressure kind of blend this, all these colors in up top. So you can go back and forth left to right with long brush strokes, but if you want any of this area to maybe be pulled down into the other, you can always do these fun diagonal type of, um, type of marks while that paint is still wet, and that helps to blend it out a little bit more. And then just back and forth, left to right. Now I'm gonna start introducing white onto my brush. So I'm using my light blue plus white, about equal parts of both. And now my color is gonna get lighter and lighter as it comes down my canvas. So light blue plus white, and then I'm gonna come down in this bottom left-hand corner, just picking up more white on my dirty brush. I'm going bottom left first because I want that bottom right to be the lightest of the colors. So bottom left with those remnants on my brush. And then this bottom right, I'm just gonna pick up white. And if you have a lot of light blue on your brush, either don't push hard as you're applying that paint or just give it a good squeeze in your paper towel. So that way that'll get the majority of that light blue out of there, but you won't, you'll still have a little bit left in your bristles in order to um, blend into that neighboring area. So just light blue and white, something like this, and then just white as I go down into this bottom right hand corner. It doesn't have to be all the way white down here in the bottom right hand corner. This is just where our sun is gonna pop through those, um, those tulips. So I wanted to make sure that I had that light base going into um, what will be my sunbeams popping through. And then I just give it a light uh, brush with long strokes in order to brush out any unfinished spots or any really thick spots. And then we're actually gonna be using our number six round brush for the next step. You could certainly do a second layer on this. If yours is not as smooth as you want it to be, you can certainly do a second layer on it. But for me, I'm thinking that mine's looking the way that I wanted it to, so I'm satisfied with that. I'm gonna put this brush away, take out my number six round, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for the tulip heads. I'm gonna be using my number six round brush to paint. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. And the colors that I'm gonna use are red, pink, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a custom color that I've been debating what I'm gonna call this custom color. I think I'm just gonna call it magenta, even though it's not as purpley pinky as magenta, but it's just for a lack of a better color name for me. <laughs> so I have magically made my magenta tone on my palette here. So this is it right here. How I achieve this, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a pinkish red on the neutral side. So what I did was I made it with pink red, not not as much red as pink because the red will steer it too quickly, It'll the red will overpower it. And then a little bit of brown to neutralize it and bring it into a more earthy color. And then a touch of white to help with the opacity and to lighten it up a little bit. So this is where I'm headed with my color. This is gonna be the base color for my tulips. Um, so I can add some nice vibrant pinks and purples and different kind of tones on top of this. This is just gonna add, provide me with a nice solid base for it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating these flower heads and the point of view where the viewer is, pre pretend like you're a bug sitting in the grass. You're looking up at the bottoms of these tulips. So I'm going to have the tulips kind of pointing towards the sky. So we're going to, they're going to be kind of almost going all towards the center of the canvas, the, the top of the, um, of the tulip. And they're going to be of varying sizes. So you can really make yours in whatever way that you want. Um, I'm going to start with some of the ones at the bottom so we can just get the idea of the tulip shape. And then I'll start to put some around the edges um, and kind of coming in the middle. So a very basic kind of tulip shape is going to be kind of like a long uh, horseshoe or U type of a shape. And then you can kind of just give yourself uh, some little petal edges along the top. This base coat that we're, good, that we're doing is going to have take on different um, tones as we go through this one step because you have a lighter canvas here and a darker canvas here. So when, it's, when, the, when you put this color over here, it's gonna look lighter and brighter. And when you put it on top of here, it'll look darker. Um, and kind of duller. So that's a nice basic shape. Um, I'll do a couple more down in through here, similar to this. I am using a photo reference to steer me into where these tulips are placed. You can really place yours whatever whatever way that you want. Um, I'm just using this this reference so I'm putting them in a similar formation as that one but you of course can put yours wherever you want. I am also using what I refer to as a directional brush stroke so as I go through this I'm going to do kind of my U. I'll do the little tippy top wherever I want that to go and then I'm going to be using more of a vertical type of brush stroke as opposed to left to right or swirly you could certainly get away with the left to right or the swirly, but again, because um, I can see through this paint and this is the direction of the petals, it will help guide me as I go through the, um, the rest of the painting process. So those are a couple in through there. I'm gonna do um, a few more in through here. You can close the tops of them a little bit more so they don't all have to be opened up. This one in through here looks like it's almost um, pointy at the top because the petals are more closed. So you can certainly um, do them again of varying sizes and they don't all have to be open open. There are in this photo there's a couple of buds that haven't even really turned super pink yet um, and they're closed. They'll be kind of like a upside down or a, like a teardrop type of shape. There are a couple of little um, additional slivers of color over in through this side. So I see that there's a little pop of um, pink down in through here. So I'm just looking through the photo, trying to see where else I'm seeing um, flowers down here. There's one that sits behind this one. So I can just kind of do my U, my long U type of a shape. And then it uh, kind of peeks out in through here. When I am doing one uh, one flower on top of another, if I wanted to make my life a little bit easier so I don't lose the definition of those and I don't want to leave a, a big outline between them, I can pick up a little bit of brown with my custom color on either one of the flowers and just make one of them a little bit darker as it's meeting the other one. And that'll help you to um, one, add some dimension really quickly to it, but also allow you to see the difference between two flowers that might be overlapping one another. There's a couple of, uh, more down in through here. This one, the corner of it looks like it's kind of sneaking behind that one. So I would use uh, this trick to just put a tiny bit of extra darkness in through there. This one almost looks like it might be lighter on the other side. So I could do conversely, I could add a touch of white to my brush, but I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna start adding white to my brush. If you were confident to do that, you certainly could, but just a little tiny bit to tell me where that, that separation is, is all I need to do. 
I've got another little sliver down in through here. This one kind of goes right off the canvas or right out of the picture frame in through there. And again, just a teeny bit of brown right where the two meet each other just to, so I can understand where, where those two are touching. Let's see what else here. I've got these guys in through here. There's a little bit more color over in through here. There's going to be the sunbeam is really shining through over on this side. Um, so these colors are going to definitely be turned a little bit different by the time we're done. I just picked up a little bit more brown. Again, I've got two that are touching in through here. So I'm just going to uh, keep with that thought process when I get the two, if there's two that are touching each other, I'll just make one a little bit darker than the other. I've got a little sliver, let's say, uh, in through here. There's a little tiny one popping out over here. I have, still have a little bit of brown on my brush, so I'm just going to roll with that one. Uh, oh, there's a big, there's a big one over here, kind of on the edge of the um, canvas. There's also um, going to be um, uh, lots of leaves and stems and stuff popping out on top of these. So just know that, again, yours do not have to be in the same exact place as mine. I am also, there. there's places like in through here, there's a big leaf that comes on top of these two. So I had to imagine what the rest of this flower was. It's not actually showing in the photograph, but um, the top of it is and the side of it is so I imagined what the rest of that was because these flowers are Behind all of the stems and the leaves. So that's why I'm opting to do the flower heads first um, So we can complete those and then build the stems on top I don't always do it this way But I knew that this would be an easier way to build this because it's so dominant the um the order that they're in uh let's see so there's a couple in through here i see a big one in through here this one's actually um, one of the buds that i was talking about so this one is going to be um kind of this teardrop and the, by the time we're done there's not going to be a whole lot of this pink on this one showing but it tells it at least starts us what where that one is there's a little um exterior or another bud sitting right behind it picking up a little bit of brown um, so I can see the difference between these two and then there's another one right behind that one so again I'm kind of really just um, being steered by this by a photo reference but once you see where all of these flowers I'm placing them you can of course place yours differently. I'm going to put a little bit more brown on my brush so I can see this guy here on top of that one. There we go. I don't want to lose where that is. Um, and let's see, I've got a couple in through here. This one actually has a uh, bud type of one. So I've got that brown on my brush. I'm going to use that to create this one. And then there's a brighter one behind it. So I can just kind of, it's almost like um, the bud is laying on top of this one, but it's funny because I, I thought that this would be a great lesson be on this perspective of flowers because we always see flowers from the top or from the side. This I just thought was a really neat perspective because we're not always laying on the ground looking up at flowers. <laughs> we're usually the opposite. We're, we're overhead of them. So whoever took this photo was pretty, it was pretty cool. They must have like set their timer on their camera or something to take it in the grass. There's a pink one in through here. There's one right here with a little bit more brown in it. This is another bud, so I'm going to put this one with a little bit more brown in it. So the, again, the, the you can use brown with this um, soft magenta-y kind of color that we created. There's a little batch over here. So as I come up now, I'm going to start turning the bottoms of the flowers are going to start being kind of on the side and by the time I'm up top to this there's a couple up in this corner the top the the bottom of the flower head is going to be at the top of my canvas <laughs> so there's a couple in through here I'm going to just pick up some more of that uh, magenta color there's one kind of in through here there's another one right next to it 
somewhere in through here. And again, don't worry about yours being in exactly the same spot as mine. And you'll find once you start going, you might cruise a little bit faster uh, than I'm going or slower than I'm going. It's whatever speed works for you is totally fine. Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of a big, huge leaf coming and stems coming in through here, but I do see a little sliver of color behind here as well. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more um, of the magenta and just imagine what that flower would be back here. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more brown to my brush so I can get this one to just tuck behind these two in through here. And again, just using that brown to push the different tones so I can see the difference between some of these flowers. Um, I think these guys are all kind of separate. I'm just looking to see if there's any more that are overlapping. There's, a, there's like a um, brownish bud one up in through here that again is by the time I'm done is not going to have much um, pink on it. So I'm releasing that brown from my brush right now, the remnants that I had on there on this little bud up in through here. And then I'm just going to pick up some of that magenta. I see, I see a little pop out one over here. So I'm just going to, there's just a little kind of mark. Oops, I have too much paint on my brush. Looks like a little, just kind of a little triangly mark over here. So we're just going to let that happen. That's a fun thing about photographs. It, it, but I'm using it as my um, inspiration here today. And what happens when I'm using photos is I often find that Mother Nature or the natural you know, ways of the world are so much more creative than my, my own brain would allow me to, to go. So if I was, if somebody said, Hey, can you paint me some tulips upside down like this? I'd be like, yeah, sure. But they would be so symmetrical. I'd have them probably all the same size, all the same shape. But so when doing, when going off of a photo reference, I just, I, I love how everything is so different. All of these flowers. There's not two of these flowers that are exactly shaped the same. They're not even going in exactly the same direction. All the little petals are little sticking out differently. So we gain a lot of additional knowledge and information as to how things are made when we can observe these nuances from, from photographs. I know that a lot of people love to learn how to paint through their, you know, through just exploratory and, you know, painting things that they like to paint. But if it, if it weren't for real life and being inspired by um, the things that just happen naturally in the world, we may not have the knowledge to create such depth, such contrast, such texture, such colors. So I always am learning new um, information as to what things look like, how, um, how their, their color patterns are when I use references, photo references. So it's just a tool to um, increase your, your you know, arsenal of information that helps you paint whatever you want to paint. After I'm done painting this one, if somebody said, hey, could you paint me a a bunch of tulips upside down, I'd be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then I would have the knowledge to know I can make them all different shapes. I can make them different sizes. As long as they have similar characteristics, like these ones are going to have similar colors. They're going to have similar ways that their, um, that their shapes are done. Like we had that U shape for the bottom and the petals kind of separate up at the top as they're opening. So that are, Sim similar characteristics, but as far as the diversity of their size and their direction, I, I'll, I would be much freer in doing a painting like this on my own without a reference now that I've used this reference to help guide me through at least one, uh, one composition with it. And you know, as, as you're developing your painting skills, you can certainly use these kind of exercises as tools to, again, just develop your, your skills. You don't have to paint photorealistic. You don't have to um, use all of the, the uh, you know, fundamental skills 
that you're supposed to use <laughs> when, you're, when you're painting, but knowing, um, just having the knowledge of them really just help, helps you to create your own masterpieces that have interests and depth and it allows you to create them with your with your skills you know and it allows you to create the things that you want easier once you've um learned those fundamentals and all that good stuff so i am just about closing up on creating all of my flower heads and you can see these ones at the top those um the bottoms of them got turned <laughs> based on where they were uh how they're leaning in towards or how that point of view is looking up at them. There's a little sliver up here in this top right corner. So I'll make sure I get that little one. And then I think I've, I think I've got them all. <laughs> so I'm going to be using uh, this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the second layer to the tulip heads. I'm going to be using my number six round brush. The colors I'm going to use are that custom magenta pink, blue, white, yellow, and brown. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a second layer in all of them. I'm going to be um, adding kind of a custom earthy tone uh, with the yellow brown and white on the ones on the buds that haven't fully opened yet and I'm going to be adding um, the information where the stems are going to be popping out of the bottom of the um, of the flower heads so we can add kind of a shadow underneath those bottoms and know where the um, where the bottoms are going to be, I don't know how else to say it, <laughs> where those stems are going to come out. So we'll add a second layer with shadows of ba uh, more of the base coat with a purpley tinge to it. And um, on those buds that are closed, we're going to add a brownish color to them. So I have already, I pre-mixed what I'm going to call lavender on my palette here. So how I got to this really pretty summery, springy color was I used some of my fluorescent pink, a little bit of my cobalt blue, which makes this fabulous purple, like this, and then I added a touch of white to it to lighten it up to give it a nice lavendery type of color. So something like this. This is going to enhance the tones in the, I think I need it a little bit lighter than that, enhance the tones in the tulips to those pinkish, tones it's going to give it just this extra vibrant um, pop to it so this is where i'm headed with my lavender color mm, maybe just a touch more pink yeah there we go <laughs> so once i've got that i am going to wa wash my mixing tool let me just get the excess off of there wash my mixing tool and i'm going to start with um kind of just identifying where i want my stems to go because that'll help me to um, put this second layer on the flowers. I'm not actually painting the stems. I just want to kind of know which ones I, I'm going to see the bottom of. These guys in through here, we're seeing them almost kind of normal from the side. So like this one in through here, my stem is actually just going to come out the bottom. So I don't even really care about that one. This one in through here, the stem comes up just a little bit so we'll see the stem coming out of there this one i can't say oh and there's a couple i'm noticing there's a couple more um flower uh, pink parts over here so i'll add that in a second but so like this one is going to be down at the bottom as well this one is up just a little bit this guy in through here is up just a little bit so i'm just adding this little mark so i understand um, what's happening and where those where those stems are coming out before I move up and lose my place I'm gonna pick up some of that magenta. Um, I see a couple more pink spots behind the um, Behind the leaves that are going to be over here So that there's probably some tulips hiding behind these these um, leaves over here So I'm just gonna add a couple of little marks 
in through there and the rest of that's leaves. Um, so wiping my brush off, picking up a little bit more brown. I'm just gonna, um, again, identify where these stems are. This one is up a little bit. This one I can't see. This one is kind of dead center right in through here. And again, these are gonna be explaining um, once we get all of the other information on, we're gonna see the bottoms of these flowers, which is really cool. This one is coming out here. So I'm not really putting a super um, clean line or mark. I'm just marking it with a, um, a little mark <laughs> in order to tell me where that stem is. So this one I think is kind of coming here. This one is gonna be one of those buds that we're gonna change color. This one's somewhere in through here. This one is right about in through here. This one I can't see, can't see that one. This one's right about here. And the, this little mark that we're doing now is gonna help guide us through painting the flower. So as I'm, as I'm doing this and I'm saying, okay, well, you're gonna do this to the bottom of the flower. Now you know where the bottom of the flower is. So it's just gonna, these little marks are gonna help guide us through um, future stuff. None of this I see. Okay, so we've got all the bottoms marked. So now what I'm going to do while I have the brown on my brush is I'm going to create this um, like neutral tone for the buds that are already closed or haven't opened yet. So I'm just going to pick or use brown, yellow, and a touch of white. You don't even have to really mix mix this. Just kind of put a pile with all three colors. It's going to end up being like a greenish tone. Uh, because the yellow and the brown mixed together will will create a greenish type of a hue. So I can take this and just go right over that bud. And you can even, you can add a little bit more white, you can add a little bit more yellow, just kind of giving it that earthy tone right now um, will allow the viewer to understand that this particular flower has not opened fully yet this stem is gonna come out right at the bottom, so I don't need to do much else to that one. That looks good. So I'm gonna find my other ones. I've got one up and through here. So again, same tone, just a little bit of that um, white, brown, and yellow. And don't worry about it being varying tones. That's my whole intent. <laughs> I want there to look like there is um, lighter spots and darker spots and we'll come back and refine it with you know a little bit of shadow or a little bit of highlight uh let's see where else is there one there's one right here so again just those three colors on my on my brush and if you still see little pink showing through that's great because the some of these petals could be you know on their way to turning pink like this one's going to have a little pink on the edge of it uh this one here is closed but it's got a lot of pink at the end so I'm just gonna put a little bit of this neutral tone down in through here to get that one started. I think that's all for the, for the buds. And then the rest is gonna be my pinker tones. So I'm gonna wash my brush. And this is where I'm gonna say, okay, the, at the bottoms, there's gonna be maybe a little bit of of a browner tone or on the shadowy side, there might be a little bit more browner tone. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that purpley tone into where I feel the highlighted or the lighter areas of the flower are gonna go. So I'll, I'll show you as an example, this big one right here. So I'll take a little bit of brown with my magenta and say, okay, well, the darkest part of my flower is gonna be down in through here. So I'm gonna use that magenta plus the brown in the darkest areas. So something like this. And then I can, as I'm moving towards what's gonna be my lightest area, I can continue to pick up my magenta. And then that's gonna give me a nice soft kind of gradient. And then I can pick up a little bit of that lavender and add that into those lighter areas of the flower. So a combination of your magenta and that lavender is going to build your light tones. So something like that would, would work as my base coat for this guy. This guy down in through here, I don't really have much darkness, maybe a little bit down at the bottom. Um, you could even use 
um, I'm seeing in the photo down by this this dark area, you could even use a little bit of yellow with the brown down in through here. It looks like there might be little bits of yellow tones down at the bottom of the flower, kind of like the bud before it became the flower itself. So if you really want, oops, you really wanted to get that hyper realistic aspect, adding at that touch of the yellow down there as well. Then I just pick up my magenta, work my way up towards what's going to be my lighter areas. And on this one, I see some real light areas up at the tippy top. So I've got some light stuff going on up and through here. So this is where wherever you see the lightest tones, that's where I'm going to put that um, lavender type of a color. Down in this guy here, I'm just going to, looks like I can just get away with another layer of my magenta. I'm not really seeing too much. It looks like there might be a little pop of the lavender tone in through there. This guy here, these little tiny um, uh, slivers of color that are going to be um, in, hidden kind of behind the leaves. You don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot to them. This guy in through here, I've already got a little bit of the brown. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a little bit of that brown, yellow, white mix to go maybe just a little bit down here at the bottom. Wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a little bit of that magenta and just creep my way up that flower and then just doing a second coat I'm picking up my lavender right up at the tippy top so you might find that you want to hit all of them with you know doing the bottoms whatever works for you this one here I think I can just get away with um, the magenta this one's a little bit lighter so they don't all have to be exactly the same color. Again, I'm noticing some of them have a little bit more um, darkness to them. Some of them have a little bit more lightness. I see some of the lighter tones up towards the top. So this is where I'm going to pull in some of those purpley tones, something like that. This one even has, I guess it looks like there's a little bit over here. And again, just know that this there's another step to go to the to these flowers. So I'm really just kind of um, this is gonna this whole area is kind of filled with sunshine on top of these flowers. So they're gonna get a a wash of sunshine by the time we're done. Um, so I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot. I don't need these to be as um, pulled into the foreground as these other guys. But I am seeing quite a bit of kind of the, these purpley tones up towards the top of this guy. So I just pull some of that lavender in there and that's looking pretty. This guy here, just going to put some of my magenta right on top of here, smooth it out a little bit. This guy's going to be really hidden behind that splash of sunshine. Same thing with this little, this little mark in through here. This guy here, mm, I'm seeing lots of that lavender. I'm actually just going to kind of streak in the lavender and let the magenta tones that are already underneath it kind of show through so that way I've got both of those tones in through here. This one I'm seeing a lot of the magenta so I'm just gonna do my second coat of magenta on here. I might even have to reload my magenta on my palette because I might run out here maybe a tiny bit of the uh, lavender up at the tippy top. So you can see I'm kind of just going back and forth right now between my lavender and my magenta. I'll probably use a little bit of the brown on these guys over here, but right now the, um, the lavender and the magenta are working out pretty well for me just to kind of get this second coat on here, allowing for some nice smooth transitions between um, the reddish tones. Oh, I missed this little guy right here. I'm just going to go magenta on this guy little sliver in through here. Uh, this one right here I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do magenta with that uh, gold brown combination right on this right hand side like that. Wipe my brush off. Pick up more magenta to come over here on this left hand side and it's right in through here and then I'm going to pick up some of that lavender. You see a lot of that up 
the lighter tones right in through here. So again, I'm putting the lavender where I see light tones. So if I see light tones at the tips of them, I'm gonna put those there. This guy in through here, I feel like I just wanna use whatever remnants are on my brush to put a second coat, because that one's gonna have lots of different tones in it. That was the one that's almost open, but not fully open. Uh, I'm picking up some of that yellow-brown combination to get the bottom of this guy. While I've got that on my brush, I feel like I can kind of hit a couple of these with this yellow-brown combination at the bottom. Mm, this one looks like it could use it. So since it's on my brush and I'm seeing it several places, I might as well just hit it with that which is what I'm gonna do for this guy over here too. And again, this is just that yellow brown, maybe there's a little magenta on my brush kind of color. Um, it's really kind of a neat effect that's happened that I'm seeing in the photo. It's just, it's giving it this, um, it's transitioning this bud into the flower. So again, those are just little nuances. If you can see them, and translate them onto onto your painting, it's just gonna make it look more realistic. And we don't often recognize all these little nuances. What's this one in through here? This Oh, this is just hidden behind a, a leaf. I just picked up some magenta. Um, we don't, it's tough to just recognize, oh my God, there's yellow in that pink flower. But if you can see it, if you can observe it, and, and that will allow you to, be able to translate it into the painting, but some, sometimes it's just really tough to, to notice stuff like that. Um, this one here, I've got quite a bit of magenta, so I'm really just kind of, now I've got the magenta on my brush and I'm saying, okay, I see a bunch of that here, I see a bunch of it in through here, and in a second I will probably pop um, my lavender onto the tips of them. I got a little guy in through here something like that. So right now I'm just, I'm kind of going a little bit quicker through them because I'm not sitting on each one to with all, all the colors in a row. Sometimes I like to expedite things once I've got my process down where I knew what, it, you know, I learned my plot process here and then up top I can just expedite it by saying, okay, well I can do all those yellow spots. Then I can um, put that magenta on my brush and work my way towards those those lighter areas. Um, in even even some areas like this one up here, you might even find you want to put a touch if you want to deepen um, some of that this side. You could even put a touch of more brown on your brush if you wanted to deepen the um, the shadow on a particular side. You could certainly do that. Um, but right now, just kind of picking up that magenta color and bringing it down towards where I'm gonna to wanna to put my, my lavender and I'll put that on in a minute. So just getting these additional uh, layers in through here. And then this one's got it over here. There's a lot of tulips in this one. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be great. We got some simple tulips, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> you don't realize how many there are until you start doing them one for one here. So that looks pretty good. Now I can just pick up some of that lavender and start adding that lavender into those lighter areas. And again, it doesn't have to be everywhere. Just wherever you're kind of um, seeing, I'm seeing some lightness in through here, maybe a little bit on this tip. And again, we will add additional um, information. There's, I've got some lightness on some of these, but I might be using um, a different tone in them later. I feel like some of these even have like whitish tones to them. Um, so we'll definitely be pulling some of the, that, those colors into it. But again, this just helps me build it in a way that I can digest each step without getting overwhelmed by any one thing. Um, I've got quite a bit over on the edges of this guy and through here. So just again, seeing where um, the lighter areas are and just adding a little bit of that lavender color. And I've got some, oh, this one's got a big, huge, bright spot in through here. 
So, and again, we're looking at it upside down, which is really, again, another super cool thing um, for the perspective of this. So it helps us to um, see it from a different angle, <laughs> literally, uh, in through here. This one's going to be hidden by a big leaf, so something like that. And then this one has a enormous bright spot in through here. So I'm just going to allow myself to uh, get a nice light area in through there and then this one also has a big one in through here and again you can see I'm kind of curving my brush to um, take on the shape of those petals something like that and I'm thinking that that is a pretty good start for that for these guys in through here so we're gonna use uh, I feel like I want to use this same brush for the next step so you can wash and dry your number six round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for the stems and the leaves. I'm gonna be using my number six round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark green, which we will use as the base coat for the leaves, and a light green, which we'll use for the base coat for the stems. So I've got those two colors magically created on my palette so you can see where I'm headed. This is what I'm going to call my dark green. How I achieve this is mostly green oxide with just a teeny tiny bit of black paint in it. I recommend just adding a dot at a time until you get it into the tonal value that you want because the black will very easily <laughs> take over and turn your green black. So just a dot at a time. You can see how I'm just adding a real small dot at a time. It will turn darker when it dries also because we're adding black into it. So when I add black into my colors, it tends to dry a little bit darker uh, than it is when it's wet. So that's gonna be my dark green. I'm gonna wash my mixing tool and then I'm gonna create a light green. So this is my light green right here. I could, I, I could have just taken green my green oxide and added white to it but that turns too minty of a color for me so how I achieve this light green which isn't much lighter than my green oxide but it is maybe one shade lighter how I created it is green yellow a good amount of yellow almost as much yellow as I have green a touch of brown which is going to help to neutralize it and then a touch of white which will get it a little bit lighter than um, than the green oxide. So this is the color in through here. That's probably a little bit too light, so I'm going to add a little bit more pigment into it, which is going to be my brown, my green, and my yellow. So I added too much white into that. That turned a little bit lighter than I had wanted. So I just, to counteract it, added back more pigment to it. So the green, the yellow, and the brown. So there we go. That that looks in a good tonal value to me. And you might want yours a little bit lighter, whatever you want. Again, this is just gonna be the base coat, so we will do a lot of adjusting to the actual stems as we go through the rest of the painting process, but this'll, this'll get us started. So because I did put a, a lot of yellow into this, when I go on the canvas, that yellow is really gonna, gonna show up when the green is thinned out or in its thinnest state. So I'm going to start with my stems first, I think, most of my stems anyways. So these stems are going to be, when we see the underside in through here, that's where they're going to come out. They're um, going to be a little bit more slender at the uh, flower head and then as they reach the exterior edges of the canvas, the stem will get a little bit wider. So I'm gonna do this one um, first. So this one, I didn't really even have one, a thing marked, but we're just gonna come out from here. And then I push my brush a little bit harder as it's coming down towards the base of my canvas. So this way, my stem will look like it's getting closer and closer to the viewer for that point of view. So I'm gonna hit uh, as many stems as I can hit. Um, the, some of the stems are hidden behind some of the um, some of the leaves, which is why I'm I'm thinking I might only do some partial 
stems in through here. I got one coming over here. This one kind of hides behind a big leaf that's going to be over here, so I'm just going to stop this stem right here. I've got one coming off of here. This one crosses over uh, this guy right here. So I'm doing these now um, before I'm done. Oh, and you can see I'm going to just push my brush as I get down towards the bottom. I'm doing, I'm putting these stems in place, stems and leaves in place now before I'm done with the flower heads because they they overlap these flower heads so much. I don't want to have to overpaint. And what I mean by that is it, I could very easily finish all of my flower heads and then put these stems and leaves in place, but there's huge overlaps in a lot of areas, so I would have to be painting these areas multiple times, and I think this is just the best expedited way to do it. So I've got this guy in through here, back behind there. It's going to pop out right underneath here. Plus, this will also help me um, make nice clean edges on my flowers on top or the, where they meet the stems. So this one, I think, kind of goes over this guy in through here. And you can see how they just get bigger and bigger as they come down. Uh, I've got one right in through here. So again, just finding the bottom of that stem. Mm, this one, oh, that's going to be a leaf behind there. So there's going to be leaves. There's no stems in through here. I'm just looking in the photo and seeing where I see stems. Oh, there's one. There's a big one coming off of this one. So this one that I'm doing right now is actually going to hide behind a huge leaf. So I'm only going to bring it down about as far as I think I need to. So. Uh, it's coming almost down, a little bit down to that one, so I'm going to just bring it kind of down in this vicinity because it just disappears behind a humongo leaf. I've got this guy right here. This uh, is also going to hide behind the leaf, so I'm just going to kind of bring that in through there. Uh, let's see, these little guys here need some stems. I think one of these guys is stems. Oh, it's coming out somewhere over here or over here maybe. So we're going to just kind of add a little bit there. We've got a little here. Uh, this guy's got one. And some of them are going to cross over each other. Some of them are going to be bigger or smaller. Yours definitely do not have to be exactly as I'm doing them. Again, I'm using a photo reference to guide me through mine, but you can certainly make yours into whatever way you want. You can see as I'm going towards this side how they're steering like this. These two guys up here, these are gonna come right out here and just go right off my canvas. Same thing here, right in through here, go right off the canvas. So oh, these are fun going right off the canvas like this. It's, it's a, a fun experience again when you're doing stuff that you wouldn't normally do. I don't, you know, normally paint flowers upside down like this. This one's going to go right over that guy. We've got one over here. Goes right off the canvas. This one right here just kind of crosses right over that guy. Mm, this one here. We've got this one kind of coming down. Getting pretty wide down at that base. And again, that w getting that stem, especially on these bottom ones, to go wider as it's hitting um, the the edges of your canvas, that's definitely going to help make this um, perspective look more legit, like more like that point of view from from the ground. It's going to make those flower heads look a lot farther away. This goes right over the sky here. This one I'm doing, uh, this whole corner is going to get washed out with um, sunshine beams. <laughs> so again, don't worry about um, making it extra perfect. We're just getting, uh, building it in an order that it would, it would appear in nature. So what I do this with skin, with, with everything that I build, I'm building it as if, I'm seeing those layers in reality. So I would see the stem, the, the brightness of the sun is going to be on top of 
what would be a green stem. So it makes sense to do the stem, the stem its natural color, and then put the, um, the sunbeams on top of it. So I think I've hit all the stems. Now what I'm going to do, I don't think I missed any. I could, if I did, I'll, I'll, I'll catch them along the way, hopefully. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash my brush, and I'm going to put the dark green on, and I'm going to do dark green leaves. There are going to be quite a bit of these leaves, even in through here, that have a bright highlight that I'm going to add later, but for ease of painting, I'm just going to do a solid color or just one color foundation, and then I'll add, as I go through the painting process, I'll add those additional highlights. So there's actually um, a big leaf right in through here that crosses over these guys. So I'm going to just use my dark green. And again, it's going to seem streaky at this point. This is just my, my base coat allowing for it to give me somewhere to start. That's, that's the whole point. Give myself somewhere to start where I don't get overwhelmed with all the different color choices and all the different nuances. Just let me start one place and then build my, um, my information on top of it. Like the leaf I'm doing right now, by the time I'm done, it's gonna be really light green, but so I don't get confused between my, my stems and my leaves, I'm starting it this way because it's gonna be easier for me to paint it this way. My process works like this where I can say one object, one specific object, let's paint those, let's start those green. And you because you can always build um, those highlights on top of a dark color or vice versa. You can always build dark tones on top of light tones, but when doing something like this, especially flowers and things that can easily get complicated and overwhelming with your color choices, um, I like to just kind of start simple and let's just build from here. This one kind of hides behind this um, stem in through here, so I'm going to just give myself a little bit of an outline Let's see, it sneaks behind here, and then it kind of re-emerges here, and then hides behind here, maybe with a little, a little darkness over and through here. So I can just, so I didn't get lost as to what, what um, colors were going where. So you can see right now, this could have very easily been a really complicated area because the stem on top of the leaves, it's you know, all green, but different shades of green. So how do I, um, how do I build it so I, as the painter, can work my way through it and not get confused or not um, lose focus as to what's what. Um, so this is how I'm doing it. And then I'm just going to paint that in and we'll build our highlights and shadows on top of it. Uh, let's see here. So that's a leaf. There's a lot of leaves over in through here. I'm going to tackle the big, huge ones, and then there's a couple on the exterior edges of them. So I've got this really big one that comes in through here. It hits this guy here. And if when you did your, your original stems, if you didn't get them as far as you wanted, you can always extend them or just put the leaf out a little bit farther. It doesn't, again, have to be in this exact formation. So then there's a fun part of it that kind of comes and travels over here, travels in through here. There's a little piece in through here. <laughs> There's a little piece here, a little piece there. I think this will go um, something like this. And again, no need to be exactly where, where these are. I'm just using the photo to guide me through um, where these particular leaves are, but yours can be in whatever formation you want. It almost looks, this leaf almost looks like um, one of those cypress trees from Starry Night, Van Gogh's Starry Night, the little cypress trees at the bottom of that painting, because it's got those little points. I'm sorry. Sometimes my brain goes elsewhere when I'm painting. So again, this is just right here. These are just a couple of really huge 
close up leaves to the view to the viewpoint wherever this you know camera was laid to take this picture it was really close to these particular leaves in through here so they're going to end up dark they're going to end up um you know a pretty dominant force in this they're going to end up looking large because they're so close to the camera so then there's a whole bunch of leaves in through here i've got um kind of one here and now on these guys i feel as though i could probably leave a little um even though i'm using all the same colors for these leaves i could probably leave a little tiny evidence or um little tiny light line between like if I want to leave here and a leaf here I just left a little tiny sliver of my background color in through there just so I could see where I wanted the separation or you could just put a little bit more paint on your brush um, that'll make it a little bit darker if it's thicker paint it'll make it look a little bit darker so you could have those gradations or you could pick up some of your light green too if you wanted to there's a little um, swishy edge to the leaf and through here there's a little point up and through here mm, and then this kind of uh, goes right up to this pink one actually I'm going to overlap it a little bit like this and it kind of goes right up forms a little point in through here and then is the other side of this guy so just making sure I don't lose that and then let's see here and then there's a little point too I got a little point up in through here there we go and then I'm just gonna color this all in with my dark green and then I think there's just a couple more leaves up top we'll get those on this is all one leaf in through here I think it's folded we'll make that folded look later and again, just kind of going right up to my stem. My stem, I'm going to want to look like it is sitting in front of this particular one. So I'll just make sure that I do that. I think I can see all of those ones and I've got as many as I want. I think there's a little one in through here. It just kind of overlaps this guy a little bit. Mm, those are all stems going up in through here. Stem, stem. Over here, there's a big leaf right in front of this guy so we're going to just take this and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to do this step where i was doing a base coat for the leaves and stems because i knew like this flower up and through here was going to be mostly hidden by this big leaf i wanted to draw it out first so we could get a believable transition from this corner of the leaf or flower head to this side um, and that gradation from the uh, light to the dark could have taken place in a more natural way you know on that on the steps that we conducted before so i think that looks pretty good i think i've got all of my leaves and my stems in place so i'm going to be using for the next step mm, I feel like I would like to use my number six round again. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the flower heads. I'm using my number six round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are white, yellow, my lavender, my custom magenta type color, and I don't know if I said white, definitely white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. I, I'm debating whether or not I'm going to need a little bit more brown, um, but we'll see. So I'm going to guide you through this by um, first I'm going to be adding my brightest, brightest highlights, which I'll use with a little bit of white. While that's kind of sitting and settling, those light, super bright highlights, we'll go back and do another smooth layer on the rest of the, um, on the rest of the flowers. And that should about do it. <laughs> and then if we need to blend that highlight into its neighboring colors, we certainly will. Um, I'm going to start with just a teeny bit of white paint on my brush. 
just on the tip of my brush. You might find that this brush for you, you might want to switch to a, a smaller brush. Oops, I just dropped my paper towel. Um, but I am going to, I might even switch to my bright brush as I go through this process if I feel I need a little bit smaller, more stable brush. But I'm going to try with this brush first and, and see where we, we head. So it looks like in the photograph um, that the sun is over here, <laughs> which to the flowers is to the right of the heads of them, uh, these guys in through here. Because there's lots of bright highlights on these right-hand sides of them. So, and there's a sunburst here, so that's where we're, we're headed. So I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna give myself um, these bright marks. Uh, this one kinda, it's got a little, little brightness in through here. You can, as you're doing this, if you don't like the firm, um, white like this, you could always pick something else up with it. You could pick up a little bit of your lavender if you wanted to start that transition out into um, the rest of the flower. But for me, I'm at, for purposes of getting this brightness really bright, I'm just going to start with the white. So I just showed you that lavender if, if that was something that you felt you needed to do, but I'm going to start with the white, just a little bit on my brush find the flower that I want to put that highlight on, put the bright, uh, heavier white where I see it the lightest. Then you can even just wipe your brush off on your paper towel and with the remnants, you can say, okay, well, there's another light area in through here. So I'm just gonna use the remnants of my br on my brush and put um, that additional light area in. And again, we will modify or um, get these little highlights to blend into the rest of the flower if needed as we go through um, that second pass along. So again, I'm just starting with, with white. This guy in through here has a real bright highlight in through here. Oh, there's another little pink area there too. I'm picking up some of my magenta because I see a little sliver here. <laughs> Sometimes those little slivers, I'm like, oh, I just got to put that there. Um, wash my brush, pick back up some white. I got a little bit on the edge of this guy in through here. Uh, this guy has got it down at the bottom. Ooh, this is fun. This one's got kind of like a double highlight under here like this. And then there's a little tiny bit on the edge over there. Well, this is fun. This one's got it kind of in several places. Uh, this guy back here has a nice highlight right on this little petal coming off there. And that this is my MO for doing um, color patterns on, on flowers, on hair, on anything is I just, I find my foundation color then I start going through and saying, okay, well, we got pops of highlights here. I just look for color patterns. There's a big bright spot right in through here. I'm thinking that that's probably just a shiny spot from um, the sun, but we're going to just put it in through there. There's a light highlight in through between these petals in through here. So we're going to put that. There's some streaky highlights in through here. So I'm just going to kind of pull out some lighter marks. This guy doesn't have much maybe just a couple little pops in through here maybe a little tiny bit in through there these guys right here there's just a little bit at the bottom because these are almost silhouetted they're so um close the sunbeam is going to kind of lay over them so they're kind of in the silhouette um there's not much here there's a little bit up and through here more more so than um what i already did with that lavender color. So these are going to be the areas that are going to go lighter than what you already have for the lavender areas. So if you have some lavender areas and they're, they're light like this one right here, that to me is a good representation of the tonal value in the photograph. So I don't need to bring that any lighter. This guy in through here, I don't know what's happening with him. He's going to turn out to be like greenish brown by the time I'm done. <laughs> that might be a little bud or something. Um, so again, I'm just picking up white to lighten up any um, areas that I want lighter than what I have already established with that um, lavender. So there's a little light area in through there. A couple of these petals um, have some additional lightness on them. So these, some of these are almost looking like they're 
um, not necessarily backlit, but they are definitely reading as lighter on one side than, um, I think I could actually pull this down in through here. Looks like there's a couple little petals in through there. This guy, I don't think he's got much. Um, and these guys up in through here, this one definitely needs uh, a big highlight right in through here. So I'm, I'm just going one flower for flower and, and looking for these little color patterns. This one's got kind of a highlight to here. And then this goes, shoots right off and disappears behind that leaf. This little guy here has got a nice bright little highlight right at the tip of this one. Oh, and it's got a fun highlight midway down. <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from, but we're going to put it right about here whatever is in the in the photo i've been if i don't understand it i just do it <laughs> uh, this guy here's got some uh highlights right in through here and also if you if you're finding as you're doing these white um, highlights to the edges of the flowers if you can't see the contrast as much as you thought you would be able to against that background it's probably because your background is really light so as you're doing this if you're finding that um you're having difficulty seeing these highlights it you may want to either darken up your background or maybe you uh, go for a different kind of color flower that will pop a little bit more off of the background um, this one's got a highlight in through here. So that'll that'll definitely be a um, a sticking point for you if you went really light on your background. This one's got some highlights in through here. And again, I'm curving my brush or making marks in the direction that I am seeing the those marks appear in in the photo. There's a big highlight on this guy right on the edges in through here. And then uh, this kind of pulls back here. And then there's a light area in through here. So again, I'm still just using white. Um, and I will add some lavender on top of it or in the areas that I feel I need to later on. But right now, just white. This one's got a big, huge highlight right in through here. So this is taking on the curve of the... Um, of the flower. I can I can tell that just by the curve of the highlights. So the highlight is going to take on the contour of that flower. Right even in through here, this is a great place to talk about this. Right in through here, I'm seeing these curved lines because it's going around that curved base of the flower. Now there's a neat little highlight just in the middle of this one right here. There's a tiny bit right here. So this is probably just the edge of this petal in through here. I'm seeing a little bit uh, right on the edge of this guy, right in through here. So again, just a little bit of white. And I, I may not use all this white in this intensity, but um, it's, I'm going back to here because I didn't like that, that lavender that I demonstrated. Um, I might not use the intensity of this white tone that I'm putting on here right now, but it will provide me with that light base um, to build the other colors on top of. So that looks pretty good. Maybe just pop little tiny bits right in through here. So now that I've got the highlights established, um, or those bright, bright highlights, now I just work my way through and do a second layer on the, on the color part. I feel like I want to pull this petal up just a little bit more. I just put some of that magenta on fill in that little space in through there. Um, so I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to do a second layer on uh, the magenta areas to smooth them out. And if there's any little areas that I want to pop additional colors, like I might in through this guy, I might put more of that yellow brown mixture. So that was where I was contemplating using the brown. So I'm going to just start with my magenta and don't worry if you bump into your stems because remember, we still have not finished our stems. So this guy in through here, I've got my magenta going on. I'm going over that dark area, but my magenta will still show through um, those tones. So if I want to add more of my um, 
lavender color, I can certainly do that as well. I don't know if I totally wanted to do that. Or, and or, you can add some of your fluorescent pink. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off. You can take your fluorescent pink and start adding, well, I had, that was too much lavender, hold on. <laughs> I might have to demonstrate that somewhere else. Um, you can use that fluorescent, fluorescent pink to just add additional highlights to it as well, or to separate petals. But that one looks pretty good picking up some of my magenta. Some of these don't need much at all, just another coat in order to um, just make them look as smooth as I want them to look. This one maybe I add, can certainly add a little bit of my fluorescent pink if I wanted to. So just adding that additional layer of the pink on top might just give you that extra little pop that you need. Um, down and through here, just the magenta. So I just keep layering until I don't need to layer anymore. Um, if I want to, again, add additional little notes, I can pick up a touch of my pink, my fluorescent pink, and maybe just add a little pop on the, on the tip of that. And this is the point where I would just kind of clean up any of my edges. Uh, I'm thinking that this looks pretty good in through here. I don't really need, oh, that was the one that I just added. I'm like, why is this one not the same color as everywhere? There we go, that looks good. And then in through here. And then when I get down to the bottoms of them where they're meeting the stems, if there's any work that I feel would benefit me, if I feel that a little bit more brown down at that bottom would, you know, make it look any more believable or realistic or whatever I feel is gonna help me out, then I certainly could do that. And that's just those choices that you make all on your own. I forgot this stem in through here, so let's just I, um, wash my brush. I'm putting some light green on my brush. So light green was not part of this step, but we're adding it. A little bit of light green, because I didn't have a stem there. <laughs> I just wiped my brush off, picking up just a little bit of brown, just to darken just a little bit down in through there. Wipe my brush off, pick up my, um, my magenta, just to smooth it out. Again, uh, allowing for, the in this photo, there's not a lot of diversity down in these bottom colors, but if you feel, look at that, I missed that stem too. I must have just not been paying attention or, or you know, have my eye on some other kind of prize here. I just picked up a little bit more of my light green. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you just get are getting into painting and you forget little things. This one even could use one right into here. Look at that, this whole little corner. Um, washing my brush, picking up some more of my magenta <laughs> to put my second coat on these guys. Uh, so I was saying, before I noticed I had uh, missed a couple of things in through here, um, you can, you know, as you progress through the painting, each step might be less and less work. You know, you're just kind of tweaking you're you're I'm picking up some of my lavender right now I'm just putting a little bit more of that I'm digging this lavender on top of um, these colors it's the lavender on top of that white highlight here now you can see how much brighter it has become so that can add those little ripply um, little nuances up in that top little corner you can add a little bit more white if you felt any little more ripples would would benefit you right in through here I think I'm gonna put a little bit of my my magenta and that might just do it the tulips are going to tend to have just a um, uh, the petals are just kind of long and stripy on they lay on top of each other so they don't need necessarily a lot of information and as you go through this if you're if you're feeling like you don't need any more then don't put any more you could you know introduce red to these if you wanted to but i just want these smooth coats or these the smooth appearance um i do feel like i might want to add a little bit more of my fluorescent pink on some of the ones near the middle um but right now i've just got some magenta on my brush and you can see as I'm kind of going through these, um, I am kind of taking one for one, but you could certainly do it whatever direction you want. I'm picking up a little bit lavender, light uh, fluorescent pink and white to just kind of amp up some of these tips in through here. So that was my lavender, my fluorescent pink. I might've said light pink, I meant fluorescent pink um, and just allow for any of these little um, highlights to happen, I feel like I could certainly um, 
play with this. This is one of those those paintings that as you as you start working your highlights in here, you you don't want to stop. <laughs> so again, I have my pink um, little concoction on my brush right now with white lavender and um, fluorescent pink, and I'm I'm just kind of cruising, adding a little bit more of these highlights in through here because I kind of got off track of um, doing the dark stuff because the light stuff was bringing me more excitement. <laughs> so I just <laughs> switched gears. Oh, a nice light highlight in through here. Um, so, the you know, I started with the light highlights. I'm kind of working my way towards any darkness, but in the interim, if there's areas that I feel um, could use a little bit more work, I can certainly do that. I feel like I've got most of these highlights nice and addressed. Um, and then down towards, it, so something like this, I would, I would definitely want another layer of my magenta. And then maybe at the bottom of it, if I felt that um, it could use anything else, I could pick up a little bit of the yellow and brown just to kind of give a little bit more earthiness to the bottom. This guy right in through here, maybe, maybe that's where we get the yellow, brown, and a little bit of white to just give me another coat on that. This guy in through here, maybe just a little bit of white, um, yellow, and brown. Lighten up maybe this side of it. I'm seeing that in the photo there's this really cool kind of swish of a highlight right in through here. So let's just emulate that. And then on the left hand side it's a little bit of green. So I'm going to actually pick up some dark green, <laughs> which I didn't say I was going to use dark green either in this step. But this one I'm seeing um, on this little bud a little bit of dark green, so that works for that. Uh, this guy in through here, I like that. This one looks pretty good, maybe a little bit of that brown, yellow, and white mixture just to kind of pop a little highlight underneath here. That looks good. If you felt that you wanted to um, add any uh, little separation between your uh, petals, you could add, hold on, let me just, before I lose this thought of doing these guys and through here, you could add. <laughs> my brain's not. My brain's not letting me go past this thing. Um, a little bit of separation between the petals. Wash my brush. I could pick up a tiny bit of brown paint. So I'm seeing like on this uh, flower right here that there's a separation between some of those petals. So if you felt that. Um, that would benefit you. There's a little bit in through here. It looks more like it's on the buds, the ones that are not fully um, opened yet. That's where I'm seeing some of these um, darker kind of marks. There's this, this guy's got a little bit in through here too. This one needs to be much lighter. I'm picking back up some of that brown, yellow, and white, but with more white this time. This one's got a nice highlight in through here. And then what I would do, once I bring it to about this stage, I would definitely sit back, look at it from a distance, and fiddle with it. So, uh, you know, like this guy here, might I might want some more of that hot pink. So I might take a little bit of that hot pink and add that in through there. Maybe I put a little bit of that on these guys in through here. But I can tell you from what I'm seeing in the photo is I can't really see a lot of separation between the um, the petals. So you've got a lot of freedom to just kind of add little bits of tones. There are I, There's a little bit of streakiness in some of them, so if you felt that you could see um, like a little bit of um, that, you know, the streakiness in the petals, you could certainly tone it from your, your uh, pink your light pink to your magenta, um, but even your, um, I just picked up some of my lavender. You can put a couple little lavender streaks in through there. Those little um, tones are gonna be up to you if you wanna make them brighter or darker, um, but again, or if you want more stripe of the stripiness to the, the flower itself. But at this point, I feel like I've accomplished as much as I need to accomplish to get my point across, <laughs> but um, I will probably step back from mine, just look at it from a distance, see if there's any more adjusting that I want to do. Um, and then we are gonna be using, I'd like to use the, uh, the bright brush for the next step. So you can certainly 
continue to fiddle oops I just made that little petal a little bit longer <laughs> continue to fiddle as much as you feel is going to benefit you on your painting and then you can put this brush away take out um, a small bright brush or a, some coin, kind of flat short brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the stems and the leaves. I'm gonna be using my number two bright brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are black, brown, white, yellow, dark green, and light green. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I wanna do is um, some of these stems, especially these ones up uh, up towards the top have a really big highlight on them but they also have a really dark shadow right where the stem meets the flower so I'll be adding little dark shadows right where the stems meet the flower and then I'm going to add these big highlights on these guys in through here and on some a couple of these guys they have some bright highlights too I need to change the tone of some of my leaves like this one's going to get a big highlight in through here make it more like that light green color um, this one's going to get a little swishy, like bendy, foldy part of the leaf. <laughs> um, this one's going to get some light green. And then the, all these stems, they just need a second layer, um, kind of more of an earthy tone to them. And we'll just uh, finish them up that way. This one, these leaves are going to get a little bit of stripiness to them. So I'm going to start with a bit of black and brown on my brush, just a little bit. This is gonna give me these really dark um, shadows right as those stems are meeting the flower. So my light source is over there. So my shadow is gonna be kind of on this left side of the uh, stem as it's meeting that flower. So something like that. So I'm just taking my brush and kind of uh, pushing it and curving it a little bit, giving a little gradation for that shadow. So it's not just one uh, firm mark. And this one I don't see too much because the light source is right here. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a lot on that one. This guy right here's got a little bit, but it might be because of this flower in through there. This one doesn't have any. This one has a little bit up in this top corner. So I'm just using the corner of my brush to do this. Um, let's see, this guy's got a little something in through there, <laughs> a little dark mark that I missed. Uh, this guy in through here just has kind of a darkness on that side. I'm just kind of going one for one right now. I see a little shadow up here and right here. Uh, this one I can't see, it's behind that. These guys right in through here, they've got a little just kind of shadow pulling it that way. This one is going to be illuminated. The stem is going to be really light. By the time I'm done, I see a little dark mark there. So that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to pop on some really bright highlights. I'm going to make myself a like a golden color with yellow and white, um, mostly yellow and white, maybe a tiny bit of brown. Boy, it's really light in these highlights. I'm going, I'm going this very pale yellow and white. So light yellow is what I've just made with yellow and white. I'm looking at the photo and it's, it's super light in some of these. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going super light. So on this one in through here, it's really light on this right hand side. So I'm gonna put a really light highlight in through here. And there's just a sliver of the dark stem kind of showing on that left hand side. So I'm just gonna bring this light yellow down. If I choose to um, transition that into this darker side, I'll do that in a, in a, in a minute. But right now I'm just doing these really bright highlights where I see them. I mean, they are super light. So what's going to happen is it's going to take on some of the green tones that we put underneath it. 
uh, depending on how thick you lay that paint on there. And it's going to tell the story of that super bright sunshine. So that's where these really um, accentuated highlights are coming from. This guy in through here seems like it's more towards this right hand side. And it does look like it's overlapping part of that um, leaf. So I'm just making sure I at least kiss that leaf. And then as I come down in through here, uh, it kind of just goes right into this little tip like that. I think actually this could be, I'm gonna add a little bit of darkness on top of this in a minute, but this, cause this one is almost all pretty light in through here and then just kind of fades into a little bit of darkness. I'll put some other dark tones on it in a minute, but I knew that these highlights are gonna be pretty powerful. So I wanna make sure that they're in place and that I, um, I know where I want them to go. And again, when it's this powerful of a, of a contrast, for me, it makes it easier, like I did on the flower heads, to know where um, these bright highlights are so I don't overpaint. Like, again, I could paint the whole rest of, I could paint the whole stem without this highlight on top of it, but because there's, it's so powerful and there's so much to it, um, it just, for me, makes it easier to just kind of put it in place and then if I need to tweak any additional information. Uh, actually, there's a little kind of fun thing here that I missed. <laughs> A little highlight to the bottom of this stem and through there there's a couple of little light marks I don't know why they're just little tiny bot top a little pops there a little bit in through here on this guy that looks good I think that's good for all those highlights so these got these other guys they're lighter or they've got like a tiny bit of a highlight but it's just on the itty bitty edge of it so I don't even really kind of want to do it yet because I, I need a second coat on them but these were very important to get that light base onto them so I'm gonna um, wash my brush because I need to do something similar to the leaves themselves before I um, before I finalize them so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that light green color this guy in through here, oh, that's not even going to be light enough. I'm going to pick up light green plus yellow. So light green plus yellow, yeah, that's going to be better. Um, this one's going to get a real light uh, um, area in through here. Mm, I could even go, I could even pick up a little bit of white and yellow too. I might even go lighter than this on this one in a in a minute, but this will this will start me. So this is going to get a brightness in through here this guy in through here uh, just get a little bit back in this section this guy right here has got a, a bright area so again light green and yellow this is gonna be something like this right down to this stem and this upper section is gonna get a a lighter color to it so this light color that I'm putting on this guy right here looks like the leaf itself is um, catching part of the Sun so we're gonna allow it to do that there's a little sliver in through here and then it kind of folds over and there's another piece in front of it so something like that works this guy there's a little bit of lightness on these guys in through here so again a little bit of light uh, green and yellow is on my brush and this guy gets quite a bit in through here has a little bit darker of an edge but light, lighter inside and then this guy right here has a super light little edge right here it's mostly yellow on my brush mm, and then these guys in through here they're just going to be regular colors let me just pop this little guy here uh, so I don't really need much lighter. This one's just going to get a, a little highlight into there. That, oh, a little bit of light green and yellow on my brush. This guy up here is getting a light zone. So something like this. Just giving me that light zone. And this one also has, I'm picking up white plus light green. This one's got a big highlight right 
on this edge in through here. So this is white plus light green to start that. All right, so now that I've got all those highlights in place, I'm gonna go back to my um, stems and just finish those out. So they look, these guys down here just look pretty earthy, kind of brownish tones, a um, little bit gray in them, but I'm thinking I'm gonna be using brown plus my light green and maybe a little bit of that light yellow just to give myself something really earthy looking. Um, so I'm picking up brown plus a little bit of light green um, to just kind of give myself, that's not gonna do it, that's gonna be too bland. Uh, let's go, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my light yellow also to give it a little bit um, softer of a look, I guess is the right terminology, and just a little bit of brown. So maybe uh, brown, any shade of like, use a little bit of the brown, you can use a little bit of the um, light yellow to add a little bit of texture. So I'm just going in those darker areas of the stems down in through here just to add a, a second layer, give myself a little bit more texture. Um, if you feel that you are, it's too transparent for you or if you feel like you need to add something else to it, you can pick up a little bit of that light yellow. That's gonna help um, with the opacity. Um, I just picked up some brown with my light yellow to go over this guy, this um, flower here because this is definitely going to be a trouble zone where the stem goes oh crosses over that color part of the flower simply because the flower is so red uh, or uh, pink on top of a light background so that will help to transition over that so again light yellow brown light green any combination to give you a real just kind of earthy color to these stems and I love using multiple colors on my brush at the same time simply because it gives me this on the fly just tonal um, or color variation which to me always looks nice and natural um, so that's where you'll see a lot of times I use multiple colors at the same time so I'm not restricted to using one color on if I'm, I'm doing these objects that maybe I wanted a little darker down at the bottom or maybe I wanted to have a little bit more texture. So I can certainly, like I just picked up a little bit of my light yellow, I could pick up a little bit of light yellow and just kind of add a little bit of textural highlight in that center area if I want to. And those are the kind of things that are just gonna make it look a little bit more natural as opposed to just saying, okay, I wanna do these with brown or I wanna do these with green. And that'll give you that that way to make them pop. Um, so again, brown, light green, a touch of my um, light yellow, and then just kind of go over that stem again and giving it that um, that textural element. And again, if it's not if it's not popping enough, if you're not seeing it enough, it's probably because it's the contrast with the color that it's next to or the color that it's on top to on top of is not great enough. So in through here, it's not gonna really matter all that much because we're gonna have, again, that um, light source is gonna be casting um, its pretty face <laughs> onto these, these guys in through here. So I'm not really concerned if you can see these guys very well, but um, if like these areas in through here, if you were having difficulty with, you just need to make them lighter or darker than whatever color they are sitting on. So those look good in through there. Let me hit these guys up here, same color combination, brown, light green, a little bit of my light yellow if I need to. And again, any kind of color combination that is speaking to you and giving you some nice earthy tones that look believable as flower stems if you want to i mean you can have purple stems for all you know you can totally make those whatever whatever you want them to be um that looks pretty good just making sure i've got these guys in through here uh, i feel like i want to use this light yellow on this guy right here i feel like i feel like this guy could use a little more highlight like in the picture it's really light in through here so i just picked up a little bit more of that uh, light yellow color pop that on and even maybe just 
pop this right here. <laughs> I know I'm not it's painting things I'm supposed to be painting right now, but those stems look nice to me. I'm gonna wash my brush and hit these leaves. So this big guy over here, I don't need to do much to it. I don't know if I said I was gonna use black, but I am picking up a little bit of black right now with my dark green to get some um, darkness down in the bottom of this guy here and give like little stripey look going up. So this is black plus my dark green. You could even put a little bit of water on your brush if you wanted to um, get that black to have a presence, but maybe not uh, be, oh, I just went outside my lines, um, but maybe not be, allow it to see those colors underneath. You can certainly use black with a little bit of water in it and that will give you an opportunity to make some of these areas darker, but not go all the way black. So right now I'm using black plus a little bit of dark green just to do my second layer on these darker areas. So black plus dark um, green. I want a little dark area right in through here. That looks nice. That's going to be a little bit of a highlight. This guy right here is going pretty dark. I think I might even go black on this guy right here. So there are areas um, in this photo that are nearly black. Uh, so if if you're not able to detect what specific color is in it and it just looks really dark for you, don't be afraid to use black. I think a lot of um, times we fear black because it can really go wrong if we if we use it too much or if it's you know it can overpower in the blink of an eye and and it's hard to um, go back from black. It's hard to steer it in an opposite direction. Um, so we we tend to fear it, which is a, a, a healthy fear to have. <laughs> but don't be afraid so much to use it. Don't be afraid of the dark is what I say a lot because that those dark little notes can do so much for a painting they they're they're going to add all that that dimension that you that you strive to have that you you know long to have the that darkness is how you get there putting a little bit uh, again i'm using my dark green and black right now to get some uh darker tones on the other side of this little stem in through here maybe a little bit down at the bottom in through here and this one is going to have, looks like there's this fun little swirly area that um, shows the, the um, leaf is bending. So I'm going to incorporate that. Looks nice. I'll put a little highlight on that in a minute. Just going to use the remnants on my brush to put another little coat on this guy and this is also the time where I'm saying okay can I uh, have did I cover up the edges uh, am I able to see you know through this can I see the um, the other aspects underneath it that I shouldn't be seeing underneath it um, I'm picking up some of my light green right now to put on the edge of this guy here so this light green on my dirty brush is going to pull forward a uh, part of this leaf and through here. That looks nice. I don't need to do much more to that. Put a little bit of my light green on just this little tip in through here. And just getting that to blend out. That looks good. Maybe just a little. So my light green right now is going to add some nice highlight and texture to any of these leaves. Uh, this guy in through here, I really feel like I want to um, wash my brush and use yellow and white on top of that. I feel I feel I want that to be so much lighter, but I don't want to go um, as light as that light yellow I created. So I'm just gonna, this is light uh, yellow and white. Really just feel that that needed to be a little bit lighter to make it pop. And I can always put um, green on top of it if I feel that I want it to go any greener than this but 
feel as though it deserves to be this light because I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it light in the picture and it, it adds so much to it. Same thing with this little guy right here. So again, when you when you see something that's captivating to you in in the photo, it's captivating to you for a reason. Maybe it's just a simple little highlight. Maybe it's, you know, a color that is really speaking to you. I just picked up some white paint to get this edge a little bit brighter. Um, those kind of things are what's going to push it into the next level. I want um, a little bit of the light green on my brush just to kind of come down this little guy. And this is going to... Um, this is that little curvy edge of the leaf. <laughs> I'm going to pick up dark green now just to on my dirty brush just to kind of get that back side of it. Um, so those little things that speak to you in a reference could mean all the world to making that painting so cool to you and um, bringing it to life and just, oh, I'm missing this guy here. Um, I'm going to go... Uh, um, dark green on this guy, just a second coat of dark green. He's getting hidden in the, um, or he's going to get a wash of the sunbeams in a minute, but just going to do dark green right now. Um, so those little nuances that you really find interesting in your reference, make sure that you incorporate them because that's, that's where the magic is going to happen for you as the artist. Uh, this little area up here, uh, I'm actually seeing some black in it. I probably should have just gone black. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up some black. Um, and for me, that happens a lot with contrast. I love deep, saturated contrast because it, for me, that brings out lots of dimension. And I love seeing dimension in in my painting. So those kind of areas really tickle my fancy and make me happy as the artist. I'm going to pick, I wash my brush, I'm picking up some light yellow. Get that a little bit lighter. I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe a little bit more light yellow and light green. I feel as though I want to just accentuate kind of a couple of these edges a little bit more like that. Mm, I'm not sure what I want to do with this guy. He's not totally making me happy. So <laughs> maybe just highlight this guy a little bit. And then we are for the next step. I'm going to use, well, let me just pick up a little bit of dark green here. Um, wash my brush first. I'm going to use, uh, for the next step, I'm going to use this same bright brush. So fiddle with these stems and leaves as much as you want. Again, bring it into a place that is pleasing to you. You might find that you want to push yours way farther than I did. I feel like I want a little bit more of my light green on in through here. And then once you've got it into a place that is pleasing to you, we are going to be using uh, this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. I'm saying if I missed anything here, I'm like, wait, wait, did I miss one over here? Wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint a sunburst. <laughs> so I'm going to have a little sunburst down in this bottom right-hand corner. This is, again, just something that is in the photo that I thought was really cool. Um, so it's a really light area down here in the bottom right-hand corner, and it just kind of bursts <laughs> on top of all of this area in through here. So I'm going to be using my number two bright brush. I'm going to be using white and I think I want to use a little bit of pink and yellow and I might even use a little bit of that lavender. So that's what I'm going to, definitely white. So I'm going to start with a little bit of white paint on my brush and I'm going to use this to kind of wash out this area in through here. So just kind of allowing myself to almost um, uh, put a thin layer of it coming out in a, uh, a splayed type of way. I'm going to put a little bit more white paint on my brush. My safety zone is in this bottom right hand corner. So what I mean by that is whenever I load paint, uh, a, a lot of paint, I'm going to load it down in this bottom right hand corner and then I can kind of pull it out um, as if it is 
bursting. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush also so I can get uh, these longer kind of um, streaks. It's going to allow these streaks to be kind of transparent and see-through. You can continue to open or um, open, keep wet that paint or reopen that paint if it dries. Like I have a dry spot right here. If I use a little bit of water on my brush and if I get to it quick enough, I can reopen that paint, which means it will re-wet and then I can start to move it again. So this is going to allow me the ability to um, have this really soft, transparent appearance coming out of this corner. And I just kind of keep working it until I have um, it smooth enough for my own visual preference. I see a little dry, skippy spot in through here, so I just reopened it with um, water and I can just keep pulling that out. So once I've got that started, and you can see it looks nice over this leaf in through here, I can start incorporating other colors if I want. So if I wanted um, some, let's say, pink in there, I can use a little bit of my fluorescent pink with a good amount of water. Think of this as a, of a glaze or a wash over it. You know, um, maybe a little bit more so you can actually see what's <laughs> have an effect happen. Sometimes I am a little bit too cautious when doing something like this, but I just added a little bit of my pink. So you can see like as I'm going over there we go. We'll do it in this area so you can see it over here. As I'm going over this area, you can see those little pink hues happening. I could do it with yellow too. Um, I'm just thinking in my head, what, what are the glowy colors that a sun is going to create? And that's where, um, that's where my head goes to with the yellow and the, and the pink. So that'll, that'll pull out those kind of glow type of um, colors from, from the sun. It's going to be dominant white. So once you've, you know, if you're confident enough in those little glow marks that you just made, you can go back to white and intensify that, um, that center or nucleus kind of area coming out from this bottom right hand corner. And it's going to be a, you know, uh, if you've never done this before, it might be a challenging effect to just get right off the bat. So if you have a little practice um, paper that you can work on to get your rhythm going with um, with water on your brush to get these marks to kind of pull out in a smooth way, um, you could also use a firmer brush. A firmer brush will, will um, move that paint easier, but you might get more streaky or brush marks. Um, using a softer brush like this, if you can get the the paint in the consistency that you like in order to um, get it to splay out that it'll have smoother um, marks to it, less scratchy kind of marks. Um, but I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I kind of want a little bit more white in through here. And if it doesn't look white enough for you, that just means that you need more contrast around it. So my white can only go so white. So if I do want there to be more um, of it visible, I need to pull it more into those darker areas or I need to add some kind of contrast around it. So that's where maybe in through here um, as it's kind of crossing over this little um, this little area here, if I put a little bit of yellow on my brush, now you can see how it is um, adding that little bit of glow on top of that white and it's going to give you just a little extra bit of um, sunshine appearance or allow that that white area to look a little bit more white and I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good so I don't think I need to do anything else to mine you can certainly fiddle with yours as much as you want I am going to be using my uh, round my number six or is that my number six my number six round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out a smaller round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I'm gonna be using my number six round brush. I'm gonna be using black paint 
with a little bit of water in it so it becomes like an ink consistency allowing me to get some nice uh, clean lines. I like to sign mine with my initials but you of course can sign yours however you want. You can sign it on the front, you can sign it on the back, you can make up a special symbol. Some people like to date their artwork. It's all up to you. These are the decisions that you make when you create your own art. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very energetic, spring-inspired floral image. <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.